Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Rather and I'm the Senior Manager of Content Marketing at Kenshu. I'm happy to welcome you to today's joint webinar with Yahoo that's entitled The Mobile Opportunity Gap. During this webinar, our speakers will be sharing key consumer shopping trends and multi-device advertiser strategies with tips for how marketers should respond in this three-screen world. This webinar is going to expand on some research that we released earlier this year in conjunction with Yahoo, which we published under the same name, The Mobile Opportunity Gap. This research really underscored the opportunity for retail marketers that those who can quickly shift their behavior and budgets to incorporate mobile will be best positioned to meet consumers' surging demand for high-quality, multi-device shopping experiences. So before we dive in, I just want to go through a few housekeeping items. Um, so to enable audio, you can listen via your computer speakers or use the phone numbers listed in the email that you should have received from GoToWebinar. If you're still having issues hearing, feel free to use the chat box and we'll help you troubleshoot. In addition, if you have any questions for the speakers, you can feel free to type those in the chat box and we'll address them in a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So now I'd like to introduce today's speakers, Will Crew and Edwin Wong. Will is the Director of Product Management for Mobile at Kenshu, and he's responsible for the mobile strategy and agenda for Kenshu and our clients. He's got a particular focus on providing Kenshu advertisers with technology to drive profitable spend in both the mobile web and the mobile app environment. Edwin is the Senior Director of B2B Insights for Yahoo, and he is responsible for driving the insights agenda for video, mobile, social, and content marketing at Yahoo. So over the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to be covering some of the findings from both Yahoo and Kenshu. Uh, you can see here that we've got the agenda all laid out for you. So um, the Yahoo um, research is going to cover the consumer mobile trends, and then the Kenshu research is going to take the advertiser perceptions um, across multi-devices. And then you know we're going to share some mobile advertising data in there to provide some additional context. And then finally, we're going to close with some key imperatives for marketers, and we'll open it up for questions at the end as time permits. So with that, I'd like to pass it over to Edwin Wong. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, thanks for having me today, guys, and uh, uh, welcome to the webinar. Um, I'm going to start off by talking about something I was reading about a year and a half ago. It was a really compelling piece by the Forrester analyst Josh Burnoff. And he was talking about the fact that in this fragmented world of multi-devices, of social, video, mobile, how do you actually bring it all back together? And he created this whole concept called the splitter net of engagement. And it really looks at how all of these touch points can be measured on this uh, one measure and this one scale. Now, what's interesting is that if you go back to your college days and whether you studied economics, cultural identity, public policy, you go through bouts of fragmentation then convergence, then fragmentation and convergence again. And what's happening today is mobile is bringing that convergence back together. Now obviously, we're excited about mobile at Yahoo because we know that it's really a big growth factor. Magna Global tells us that mobile spend will actually grow by 61% and currently accounts for a fifth of all digital spend. Today we're going to talk about shopping. We're going to talk about how mobile is ultimately permeating our lives and how it's having a deep impact. As we start with uh, what we're actually going to be covering, um, sorry Kelly, if I could have the mouse please. Okay, you should be all set there, Edwin. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we know that uh, if you take a look at what eMarketer and Comscore tells us, that smartphone ownership will actually surpass about 50% of the population. In fact, uh, as late as July 2016, of the 234 million cell phone owners, over 70% of these consumers now own a smartphone device. That's 169 million Americans. Uh, as I was actually starting to look at mobile about 2010, late 2010, uh, we were actually looking at 75 million users with a smartphone device. We've now grown two and a half times that amount. Uh, Greg Sterling of Marketing Land tells us that he predicts that by the end of the year, we will have approximately 75% penetration rates. And in fact, one in two Americans will actually own a tablet, and those that actually make $75,000 or more 
actually 75% of them own a tablet today. As we take a look at time spent in May 2010 till now, April 2014, Comscore tells us that the growth rates of time spent online on these devices has grown 5x, 127% more time than 2010. And so we're spending more time digitally with our mobile devices. Now, even someone like Hans Vestberg of uh, CEO of Ericsson uh, Mobile tells us that there are three times as many smartphone activations every minute around the world than actual babies being born. Nielsen tells us that three out of four every smartphone or every phone activation is a smartphone device. All of the things that you've actually heard are things that you've read about and are things you hear every single day. But it's really not the growth rates that matter. It's what this tiny device actually means to us. And every time I actually talk about mobile, I love speaking to what Amber Case tells us in her TED Talk. She's an anthropologist that has been studying how mobile ultimately impacts our lives. And what she says is that we're truly entering this age of being what she calls a cyborg. Now, she defines cyborg, obviously, as an organism to which exogenous components have been added for the purpose of adapting to new environments. And what's fascinating about the topic of anthropology is it's the study of culture. And within the study of culture is the study of tool sets. Most of the tool sets that we've actually seen across culture have made us physically faster, have made us physically better. But this is really one of the first devices that have ultimately freed us emotionally and really freed us mentally. It's creating these wormholes, as she calls it, that really compresses time and space and allows you to connect to everyone within your communities and within content at the single point of a button. And what I've actually seen is that mobile has ultimately transformed the four C's. It's moved from being a communications utility to really impacting us and connecting us from a community perspective. About 50 to 60 percent of us connect with email and our social communities on our mobile device. When it comes to content, within our global video study, we found that those that own a smartphone device are leveraging that device, at least 42% of them on a daily basis, watching video. From a cultural perspective, 62% of respondents tell us that without this device, they really don't know what's happening around them. It's literally impacting real life circumstances. It's making its way into our digital connective consciousness. In fact, at Yahoo, we really celebrate this whole notion of daily habits. And mobile is really starting to facilitate that. In fact, a Media Post article tells us that as many as a third of us rely on our phones as our primary internet access tool. And we can see here that 46% of us are connecting with content at least once a day on a daily basis, as well as the other C, which is all around communications that I talked about earlier. Now, what's important is for us to start to think about how it's not really about cannibalization, but it's really about capitalizing on how these devices and contextualizing how these devices interact with us on a daily basis. We talk to many consumers on, on a, a yearly basis about research, especially around mobile. And what we did is we gave these consumers a, a piece of paper and we said, okay, we know that you own each of these devices, a laptop, a tablet, a mobile device, uh, a gaming console. Tell us how it actually all fits within a family tree. And the contextualization actually is quite hilarious. Uh, when you take a look at the TV, which is down at the bottom, uh, they liken it to their grandparents. Uh, they tell the best stories. But just like the television, you might leave it on and stop paying attention. Then you have the laptop, which is the parental figure. Um, we've all in the advertising industry gotten laptop burn as we're working on the next RFP. It really does the heavy lifting. You've got the tablet, which is really the cool older sibling that is, allows this lean back experience and we essentially use it because it gives us this great immersive experience. Then you've got the gaming console, which is our hyperactive cousin that we like spending lots of time with, but after some time, we'll like to put them away. We'll send them away. And then the trusty sidekick, which is the mobile device. It's always on, always evolving because of what it ultimately means and all the apps that we actually have on a daily basis and use. Um, and so really contextualizing how each of these devices works will help us to understand their usage rates, especially within the shopping process. As we move on, we know that when it comes to uh, previous usage, there were gaps in the space. We might watch TV in the morning, then we put it away. We were chained to the desktop. So if we wanted to log on with AOL, 
it would take 15 minutes before we got on. And these gaps in time have actually been closed as a result of mobile. Mobility and portability have truly changed our capability to access and interact digitally. And what it's created is this seamless stream of consistent consumption, this continuous line of usage that allows us to be constantly on and allows brands to constantly be connecting with us on a daily basis. Now, as we move on to uh, the next uh, slide, um, what we'll find um, is that shoppers are actually behaving in uh, very new ways. And uh, what's interesting is that even when you take a look at uh, some of the growth rates that we've actually seen, we've been uh, doing this research since uh, 2011, and we've found that across the 14 categories that we did this research on and across the 10,000 consumers, we've seen astounding growth rates of 145%, 108% for personal travel. The fact is, this was consistent throughout all that we actually saw from a category basis. But we're not really the only ones saying this. Um, according to IBM and the Digital Analytics uh, Group, they found that last uh, Thanksgiving and uh, Black Friday, um, approximately a quarter of all digital traffic was actually mobile driven. It was a 43% increase year over year. The research group Forrester states that 114 billion mobile transactions will take place in 2014. It accounts for approximately a third of all digital transactions. And Goldman Sachs did their own projections, and they state that by 2018, there will be roughly 626 billion sales, retail sales, in the mobile space. And so this is consistent uh, throughout the industry, and it's truly important that we start to understand how important mobile truly is. Um, and we all know that while mobile is critical to our daily lives, as well as tablets, what's interesting is that the 50% right in the middle say that it ultimately elongates or extends that engagement and amplifies what we truly want to do as marketers and content publishers. Now, one of the things that we get asked often is, uh, how does mobile shopping actually work? Well, mobile shopping is, is obviously omnipresent. The definition of mobile as it stands uh, the tactical definition is that it's being on the go. But when it comes to mobile shopping, what we're starting to realize is it's not about being on the go at all. It's about constant connection and easy access. In fact, most of that shopping across the 14 categories that we looked at, it starts at home. It starts uh, when you're actually watching television and multitasking, and you get that itch to really chase those breadcrumbs that advertisers uh, put right in front of you. And it really follows through while you're trying to get somewhere, while you're in-store and waiting in line when it comes to uh, the omni-channel experience. Now, one of the other things that we actually found is that there's real fluidity within the shopping process. Again, it's not really about cannibalization, but the capitalization of sequential devices. How do we start on the mobile device, and do we always go back to the PC experience? The fact is, Currently, the PC experience still offers great shopping experiences. And so when we spoke to our consumers across those 14 categories, those consumers will literally go back to their PCs even if they start on their mobile devices. And so as marketers, we need to start to think about how we flow throughout all of our devices, not just being on one. Now, the one thing that we actually found is that currently marketers are not yet taking advantage of this mobile device when it's being picked up. The consumers that we spoke to say that they're actually disappointed when companies aren't optimized on the device that they choose to pick up to shop. But the one thing that we found most surprising is that third line, that consumers, 38% of them, are less likely to visit a brand site if it isn't optimized for their mobile device the first time that they actually visit again. And so really thinking through the consumer experience is critically important. What is your company doing to plan for that consumer connection when they go to your site, on mobile and on PC? And one of the things that we're starting to see more and more is, as much as it is great about being cute and really thinking about some of the newer things you can do on mobile, be it uh, location, geolocation fencing or things of that nature, at the end of the day, the consumer is using their mobile device very similarly uh, in the way that they use their PC device. It starts with search, review sites, deal sites, or apps. So thinking through that journey and how they're using the device through the shopping process is critically important. 
also when we take a look at uh, what we call uh, the consumer journey ride, if you take a look at the purchase funnel all the way from awareness to gathering more inf information, all the way down to purchase and even loyalty, you could see here that the mobile device is being used throughout the process even much more so upper funnel as opposed to lower funnel. So thinking about the KPIs that you ultimately use as a marketer is critically important. Should it be the last click or should it be about the engagement funnel that you're truly thinking about? How do you really spur on that loyalty with the mobile device post um, advertising? Now what's critically important is really starting to understand how mobile shopping ultimately impacts purchase behavior, be it on the device, or off the device. In fact, many of the things that we see being purchased happens at the store. So when we spoke to some of these consumers that actually shopped across those 14 categories, we see that it ultimately impacts lower commodity purchases, be it a movie ticket, food and beverage, or even a sweater, as well as higher commodity purchases as you'll see here, be it if you are uh, shopping for home improvement products because you're remodeling your home, a credit card purchase, or even auto. What's interesting is that when you think about that 24% of mobile shoppers um, that actually purchase the car, I've been doing research for about 15 years now. The typical rates of incidents for those that are actually in market for a new car is roughly 6%. So the big question here is when a consumer picks up their mobile device to actually shop for a car, for health purchases, for insurance, is it a great targeting tool to say that they're actually really in market and ready to make that purchase. Now we're going to close this portion by talking about advertising and what advertising ultimately means to the consumer. The consumer is actually asking us as marketers to really start to leverage this device, the form, the function. It needs to be entertaining, bold, and interactive. And what's interesting about this is we're not the only ones as consumers asking for this. Um, Session M and Miller Brown recently did a study where they looked at the top 200 to uh, 300 ads, and of the best performing ads, consumers rated those ads as being valuable, relevant, engaging, and it really communicates with that transparency and delivers on what they call uh, this this value of reciprocity. Um, uh, at Cannes, the IAB Mobile Manifesto came out where they interviewed folks that do mobile best on the agency side as well as creatives who really built the best uh, mobile ads that they've seen. And within that paper, they found that the best mobile ads are clear, persistent, striking in design, short and tight, and cultivates this user response. In fact, we're not the only ones that talk about this as well. It's this value exchange that needs to happen between the consumer and the advertiser when it comes to mobile advertising. How do we deliver for that consumer? And what the consumer ultimately wants most, aside from what you just saw on that last slide, are these three things across these 14 categories. They want relevancy to location, relevancy to interest and background, and again, that value exchange. In effect, what they're really looking for is this whole call for personalization. This call for personalization isn't just happening in advertising, but it's happening at a much broader level. Case in point, if you think about the last couple of releases for the Galaxy phones from Samsung, it literally personalizes to you. What do I mean by that? If you're playing a game or you're looking at video and you look away and speak to a friend, it literally tracks to your eyeballs and it will pause the game or pause the actual video that you're watching. If you think about what Bloomreach and Neiman Marcus is doing, they literally personalize the shopping experience for you. So if my friend Kai and I are shopping for the same tie, what it will personalize to me next in terms of a pair of pants or shoes is completely different. As a result of that, they're seeing basket sizes grow by 150% and engagement times grow by 40%. The MLB and Cisco have joined together using the mobile device uh, and Bluetooth nodes. They're literally personalizing the way you actually watch games. So when I'm at a game and I'm sitting behind home base and my friend Kai is sitting behind third base, it will take into account my location and tell me what deals I have and tell me exactly how to have the best multi uh, multi-device experience while at the game. This call for personalization is incredibly important, especially when it comes to advertising. So as we close on advertising and hand it over to Kenshu and, and think about the work, the fact is what we do from a category perspective still holds true, be it on mobile 
on television, on magazines, on digital. The fact is, if you take a look at beauty and you look at the top three things that ultimately uh, over-index, what consumers want are bold ads, relevant to their background when it comes to ethnicity, when it comes to who they are gender-wise, gender and they're looking for coupons. The same can be said for all 14 categories. So what you do on those categories across channels still works on mobile. I'm going to turn it over to Will now to take us through all the great things that they actually helped us find uh, from uh, the Kenshu side. Will? Yeah, thanks, Hi. Edwin. Thank you uh, very much. So, um, yeah, guys, uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, what I'm going to kind of shift over to now is, uh, you know, you heard about the consumer trends and heard what's going on from the consumer's perspective. What I'm going to talk to now is uh, a focus on uh, the marketing perspective. So what's going on in digital marketing and wh how are advertisers kind of thinking about these challenges. So I'm going to start here with kind of the, the up and to the right slide, uh, something you may have seen before, which is representing you know how important uh, mobile is in the digital marketing ecosystem and how it's growing uh, in importance over time. So now, you know, most of the, the, the metrics that we see, you know, 25, 30 percent of, uh, uh, of all digital marketing is going uh, to, to mobile devices. And, you know, that's expected to grow uh, with varying degrees on, on the various uh, research providers. But most of them are kind of consistent around, you know, north of 50 percent in, in a couple of years. So it's becoming something that's uh, not a nice to have anymore, uh, but something very, very critical to our customers and to all advertisers globally. When we look at kind of zoom into the, the Kenshu customer uh, and what they're uh, doing within the mobile environment, uh, we see something consistent. So budgets across, you know, smartphones, tablets, and, and desktops here, generally it's about an 80-20 split uh, in terms of the current focus and the current uh, at least attention uh, that our, our customers are giving to, to mobile devices versus desktops. And that's pretty consistent with the actual numbers uh, when you look at uh, the numbers across the various regions uh, that we're working in. This is a study we put out for just for Q2 of this year uh, of both the spend and click share uh, from mobile devices, tablets, and, and smartphones. And you can see it's you know uh, creeping up to 30 percent uh, of total total budgets that we see on the Kenshu system across our, our client base, which is very significant. It's interesting to see you know with enhanced campaigns and kind of some of the changes uh, from all the providers on the search engine side, uh, we've seen that CPC still has a discount uh, for, for smartphones. Uh, so it's the gap has closed somewhat, as as you can see from this slide, but. Uh, we still are seeing that uh, slight discount for, for smartphones uh, and to a lesser degree for tablets as well. And the last uh, kind of slide in this section is something that we uh, were, were curious to, to kind of get uh, marketers, um, I guess, opinions on, which is how does mobile perform in the context of desktop? And it's pretty consistent across the customer base. Uh, to varying degrees that uh, there's a general perception and a general kind of uh, uh, measurement problem with, with mobile uh, that tends to uh, have it shown as performing worse than desktop. So whether it's slightly worse or much worse, this is a significant challenge for, for marketers uh, to, to this day, uh, and it seems to be only growing in importance as the you know, budgets and consumer focus are shifting to, to the mobile environment. So with that kind of primer of the data, what we really want to spend the most time on today is to walk you guys through a study and a survey that we did with our customers uh, around this kind of opportunity gap concept in the mobile environment. And what we're trying to measure is knowing what Edwin presented on, on consumer perceptions, we wanted to get a little bit uh, of insight into how advertisers uh, perceive how they're, you know, responding to these consumer trends uh, and hopefully capitalizing them uh, with their digital marketing activities. So th the next few slides are going to be all from this study. So the first first one here is something that I think, you know, there's very large agreement. 99% is a good number uh, about, you know, th the fact that the the interplay of the various devices that a consumer has has some impact on whether they're going to convert or not. So you know, the classic case here is users searching on a mobile device 
uh, and their experience uh, on that device uh, very uh, very strongly influence their uh, propensity to convert on the desktop, and that's something that is kind of universally agreed upon by all marketers. And if you zoom in on this a little bit to see, you know, how marketers perceive this, this might be changing. Uh, there again, there's kind of consensus uh, with this slide that. You know, it, it's growing in importance every single year. This study was done just earlier this year, uh, and you know, most of the clients uh, that we talk to uh, are saying it's it's a very significant increase. Uh, they've seen that mobile search is to uh, their programs, their focus, and also uh, their consumers' uh, perception as well. And this this one here was I thought was pretty interesting. So Edwin talked about the behavior and kind of the different, uh, I guess the different family tree <laughs> of of the devices. And I think when you talk to advertisers, there there's some agreement on this in that uh, you know most see uh, mobile device uh, engagement as more of a mid funnel activity. So it's the it's the research browsing. Uh, you know, looking up uh, certain reviews and things like this, as opposed to the traditional uh, role of search in the desktop environment, which is a very uh, bottom of the funnel uh, conversion heavy activity. So we, we see the behavior, at least from the marketer perspective, uh, changing quite a bit uh, from, from mobile to desktop. And here's a highlight of that. So kind of underscoring that point, you know, that, that we talked about a little bit about uh, in-store activity and how uh, mobile usage influences that uh, side of the conversion cycle. 73% uh, of marketers that we talk to are feel that their users are likely to, you know, do a mobile search within a store or actually a place of, of business. And that kind of confirms what, uh, what Edwin showed in his slide as well. Great. Uh, so the you know talking about the bottom of the funnel uh, conversion activity. So you know 53% of our customers feel that consumers are are very comfortable making a purchase on a tablet, where only 20% on on a smartphone. So it's similar to the mid funnel versus bottom of the funnel kind of uh, breakdown there on mobile. But it's interesting to see the the difference between tablets and, and smartphones. And I think that's pretty consistent with what we've seen from, from Yahoo and the, the other search engines about you know, how the, the enhanced campaigns and things are structured, that tablets you know, are taking a larger and larger share, and also the fact that CPCs are, are lower on smartphones versus tablets in the previous slides. So th these couple of questions were interesting because they're kind of directly related to uh, Edwin's study on the consumer side. And this is about the marketer's viewpoint of how consumers react when they reach a, a site that's either not mobile optimized or just presents a, a poor experience uh, on a mobile device. And it's kind of consistent, actually even higher percentages than what Edwin had shown, is that you know consumers are pretty uh, highly disappointed from a, from a marketer's perception when they reach this this non-optimized site. So we know that you know when within the marketing world, there's challenges on uh, making sure the content is optimized for for all devices out there, uh, and sometimes you're working with the content teams uh, on these, but it's just kind of underscoring the fact that you know consumers when they when they reach that they're just much less likely to take the action uh, that you're trying to to drive, and you know you're you're spending money to to get them to convert. Uh, the second question here is again directly uh, in response to to Edwin's study, which is. You know, if if there wasn't uh, if the site was not mobile optimized on the first visit, will I ever come back again? Kind of thing, uh, and this is a little bit lower. Again, I think maybe uh, consistent with what you've seen. But the point is, if you miss that first shot, there's a chance you might never get a a second one with that consumer. Cool. So all this speaks to the need for cross device strategy. Uh, a strategy that is not kind of uh, siloed per device. And so we asked our customers, and some of which hopefully are on this webinar, is you know, how sophisticated do you feel uh, advertisers in general are when it comes to cross-device strategy? And we kind of were a little bit surprised with the answer here uh, in that 42% uh, 
said that you know we're way behind essentially we're we're not uh, close to matching the trend that we see on the consumer side and we're kind of struggling uh, with our ability to do that uh, even you know somewhat aligned is still kind of a, a lightweight uh, a lightweight uh, success measure and you know five percent ahead of consumer trend so this is a real challenge uh, in the in the marketing landscape and this is coming from the, the marketers directly saying this so that's why we're a little bit surprised now when we asked uh, the same uh, marketers how do they feel they're doing themselves or their own organization uh, when it comes to cross device you got a little a little bit different <laughs> different answer which is kind of interesting uh, that even though the the global uh, marketing landscape is behind you know I'm actually doing uh, better than that so I think there's a little bit of uh, uh, self-promotion here but the point is uh, when you zoom into your own activities hopefully there's some progress being made uh, within the individual marketers uh, organization which is good to see so one last slide here on, on this piece, uh, and I think this is something that I personally have seen changing, and I was a little bit surprised to see such a high percentage here, which is, you know, when we talk about reaching uh, consumers with uh, marketing on the various devices, are those strategies the same, or are they actually varied uh, for the different form factors and the different experiences? Uh, for these devices. So 77% of the customers we talk to say they take either the same approach or a slightly varied uh, approach per device. So I was a little bit surprised by that. I think maybe you know one thing that we see changing and why I mentioned I see it changing is just that the creative canvas or the ability from the search engines to create different experiences is actually uh, progressing here as well. So hopefully we'll see uh, marketers start to take advantage of that uh, as they become available. Cool. So the, the next thing we were curious to understand was, you know, you look at all the levers uh, you as a marketer have to uh, influence conversion on a mobile device, what actually works? What do you think has the biggest impact on, on consumers and specifically on consumer conversion? It's interesting the first uh, uh, highest percentage there, 46, was mobile specific ad copy. So I just, the previous slide I just showed you, you know, 23% are, 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 are doing that, whereas 46% uh, said that it's the most important thing to do. Uh, so it's uh, kind of interesting to see the mismatch there. Uh, and, you know, this is something that we'd hope uh, would be improved over time. Cool. Um, so all this is to say, you know, this is kind of a, a lot of data here on this chart, uh, but the, the point of, of all of it is to say that, you know, as a marketing community, digital search uh, advertising community, we have a lot of room to do better uh, and to grow and provide a, a better experience uh, on mobile. So I'm not going to read through all of these, but just to say that, you know, uh, I think as a takeaway, it'd be good to take a look at this. What uh, our, our marketing uh, community is planning to do or already doing uh, this year to take advantage of some of the challenges that we've said. And you know, it varies from better experience on the web to a, a mobile application. Uh, specifically, we've seen that kind of pick up more and more uh, within the customer base. So um, it'd be curious to see this again next year and see how that's changed over time. So this is just kind of a summary of, of what I just mentioned, but you know, most of the marketers feel they're, they're doing something. They're providing a, a decent experience or some differentiated experience, uh, but when it comes to something more specific or uh, sophisticated, there's room for growth. And I think that's part of just you know, the, the, the first slide, to be quite honest, about you know, how the, the budgets are changing. And as the budgets become uh, bigger and bigger and, and, and grow in prominence, you'll see more and more appetite to uh, perform, you know, more advanced tactics uh, within mobile. So the last kind of slide section we had before we open up to Q&A was just kind of to close on, you know, what we think are the imperatives for, for marketers and kind of the takeaways uh, from our perspective and, and things to focus on. The, the first thing that we think is, is critically important in this environment is to define what the goals are uh, for, for mobile and specifically for, for mobile paid search. So, you know, we, we talk to, to customers and they're, they're really all over the board. Uh, 
And if you did the same kind of survey for desktop, I think you'd see much more consistency uh, within, the, within the base. Uh, so this is something that I think is going to change. You know, online traffic, uh, that's kind of the first uh, metric anyone would ever look at. Uh, but we're getting much more uh, closer to, you know, real measurement capabilities and, and tactics that actually look more similar to how we optimize uh, in the desktop world. And so we think this is one of the, the most important things uh, to look at in the, the mobile, uh, both tablet and, and smartphone environment. And the second thing that uh, we wanted to, to leave you with is just the, the ability to incorporate mobile into any campaign. Uh, that you're you're pushing out um, in advertising, so it's a marketing plan around uh, around holiday or around a certain um, a certain season. Uh, you know, mobile doesn't uh, require uh, its own kind of plan. It should be a part of the of the broader plan and, and a component of, of what you're doing with a differentiated strategy behind it. Uh, and so, you know, there's a, there's few stats here, but you know, those are the kind of consistent with all the all the stats we've seen and all the research we've done, both on the consumer and marketer side. You know, when this is done correctly uh, and effectively, uh, the results just tend to tend to follow, uh, and we tend to see a much better uh, impact as well. And Edwin, I think these are the last two for you. If you want to take it from here. I, I think the, the whole concept of, of thinking about signals is incredibly important. Um, and it's really understanding how the device literally fits into how the consumer uses it. When you think about the research process that we uh, put out, um, where does mobile and tablet actually fit? Um, as Will was talking about, it's mid-tier, but it's really uh, upper funnel for the consumer all the way down to the actual conversion. So think about that that device and what signal it actually puts out there. Um, one of the things that we actually see is also location and how location is critically important and time of day. So all these signals ultimately mean uh, a much smarter way to communicate differently to your consumer based on platform. And then obviously I think both uh, Will and I have been talking about this whole fulfilling uh, consumer uh, expectations. Uh, the reality is, uh, while many of us are planning um, experiences for these consumers on mobile, um, the adoption curve is growing um, much slower on the marketing side, the advertiser side, than the actual usage curve for the consumer. So really uh, thinking about how that consumer journey, if not built quickly, and correctly might actually have a detrimental impact in your overall business in the future. Um, I think that's going to be incredibly important um, as we move forward. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That was uh, you, you both shared some really uh, insightful takeaways and um, stats that I think everyone on the phone can appreciate and are interested in. Um, if you want to download our full report that we did, uh, Kenshu and Yahoo that goes into more details about some of the statistics that Edwin and Will shared. Um, you can download that at Kenshu.com backslash mobile opportunity gap um, and there you'll be able to download sort of a full analysis of the consumer trends and the advertiser perceptions that we have discussed here today. Uh, in addition, uh, I want to open up the floor to some Q&A. Um, we had a few questions come in. Uh, a lot of people asked if they were, if the slides would be available after this webinar. Uh, they will. We'll be able to provide a, um, a set of the slides as well as a recording of the webinar shortly following uh, today. So be on the lookout for that. We'll make sure to email that out to everyone who both registered and attended today's webinar. Uh, in addition, if you have any questions, just a reminder, you can use that chat box that you see on your screen uh, to submit to, um, any questions that you have and we'll get those addressed. Um, one that I wanted, um, that came through that I wanted to share was um, you showed some data around device goals and uh, noticed that app installs were lower than expected. Do you see this trend changing and that gap closing? And I think, Will, you alluded to this a little bit when you were talking about device goals, but do you want to uh, go a little bit more into that? 
Okay, yeah, sure. So, yeah, regarding the, the kind of app installs and just apps in general in search specifically, you know, this is search data we're showing. You know, if you, if you look at the percentage of, uh, of that as a goal versus some of the other, you know, digital marketing channels out there, whether social, display, et cetera, uh, it tends to be a little bit under-indexed. I think the main reason you're seeing um, seeing changes or we're likely to see changes that uh, you know Yahoo and, and others are are you know adding new formats that allow uh, developers uh, of apps to actually promote them in, in search engines uh, that they didn't have before. So you know a lot of that is relatively new uh, this year and just in the last few months even and uh, in the future a couple of months we expect even more. Um, so yeah, I, I expect that that trend to uh, somewhat change in the fact that apps will be much more prominent uh, in search results. Great, and then um, we had a question around um, for those just getting started, sort of thinking about mobile and developing a strategy, uh, what would be sort of the best place to kick off and, and start that conversation within their organization? Okay, I can give you my viewpoint and Edwin if you have anything else. So, you know, I think um, I think I would come with, armed with the the data, some of what which we showed here, but probably from the the business itself. You know, what you're seeing uh, from the marketing landscape. You know, paid click share, uh, paid uh, spend share, etc. For your for your business, I think this is critical driver, at least for what we've seen, into change uh, change perception and also change and and motivate the business to invest. Uh, in what's needed to, to capture the opportunity in the right way. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. And then the other thing is, you know, working with the content teams uh, at, the, at your organization to develop content that fits this experience and, and makes sense in context of the, of the device and all the other signals we said is, is critically important. Uh, and you, as a marketer, you know, you, you can't do your job uh, as well as you'd like if, you know, the landing page is not uh, a good enough experience, et cetera, based on what we showed here. So I think those are the two first big steps that I, I would go after. Yeah, I actually uh, agree with that. And I think one of the eye-opening things is just when you're armed with the data, um, your organization should begin to see the opportunities that are actually right in front of you. And, and similar to some of the data that we presented by category, we do see some differences. And so at Yahoo, we've made an investment of actually uh, breaking out the, um, the data by, by QSR or auto. And so depending on, on the actual vertical you're in, if you need more information, feel free to contact me after this, and, and we can send that off to you guys. Cool. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Um, don't look, doesn't look like we have any more uh, questions that came through the chat. Um, so with that, I just want to thank everyone for joining today's webinar. Oh, wait, hold on. I think we did get another question that came through. Sorry, I, want, I just want to make sure we address it here. Um, any thoughts on um, non-shopping industries and mobile usage? So if we think of other maybe like lead gen, uh, this person gave the example of like uh, job searches. Um, so any other thoughts on sort of how other verticals and industries should be thinking about mobile outside of the retail space? Yep, so I can capture that one. I know, Edwin, you had some vertical info, so if you want to comment, feel free. So the, you know, the Kenshu data is not retail specific. Uh, all of the perceptions and data that we showed are kind of cross-vertical, so I'd say you know, that, that perception and kind of the, the data should be uh, fairly consistent uh, in terms of at least the trend, maybe not the exact numbers, but the trend itself. And then, uh, you know, in terms of strategy executing some of the, the best practices, we said, you know, those were not intended to be solely uh, specific to retail, right, creating a good experience on, on mobile devices, again, cross-vertical. So, uh, you know, we, we certainly see varied uh, varied performance and kind of varied multipliers and all the key metrics across uh, verticals and specifically for lead gen, but uh, the general trends and principles are, are uh, somewhat consistent would be my response. Mm -hmm. I actually agree with that and also I think what's interesting is that when it's not retail specific there's opportunities to um, actually uh, connect with your consumer with, with great contents. 
And so Yahoo being a, a, a publisher, we, we've got a lot of best practices there. Um, and uh, especially with uh, how to engage with the consumer uh, on mobile devices, uh, we're going to be coming out with our next study that really talks about how the, the content experience is ultimately changing because of the mobile device. And some of those things that we're seeing within our experiences can ultimately be transferred over to what, what folks that aren't as retail heavy uh, might want to use uh, to, to really think about how they engage their consumers across devices. Great, yeah, content is king, we know. So um, looking forward to uh, that topic for sure. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I, with that, I just kind of want to close out again. If you're interested in the research, um, Yahoo, the the insights, Yahoo Ad Insights, the research is up there. It's up on the Kenshu site. Take a look and um, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see and go a little bit deeper into some of the analysis that we presented today. Um, and with that, I just want to thank uh, both Will and Edwin for being on the line today and sharing the, the great analysis and insights that they gave. So thanks, and everyone have a, a great rest of their Thursday, and uh, happy Friday and a good weekend. Take care.